some of this information on phases in general chemistry may be review, but it's very important to know the factors that influence phase changes because this is one of the most important components of physical chemistry. And there are a lot of nuances of these relationships that can be tested. First, we'll go through the three major types of phases. You have the solid phase, which involves molecules and atoms interacting in a fairly lattice-like structure. You have liquids, which have strong intermolecular bonds, but they also take on the shape of their container and they flow more freely than solids. And gases, which involve very, very minimal intermolecular forces, but rather a lot of collisions and particles that are spaced apart more than in either of these phases. There are a lot of words you can use to describe changes between phases. To go from a solid to a liquid is usually described as melting, and to go from a liquid to a gas is described as either evaporation or boiling. Going the other way from gas to liquid is condensation, and from liquid to solid is described as the freezing point. There are words that are used to classify these two movements. Between solid and liquid in either direction is referred to as fusion. And so if you see the temperature of fusion, that means you're looking at either the melting point or the freezing point. But it can simply be described as the temperature of fusion. Between liquid and gas, it's described as vaporization. And that's a two-way movement that you shouldn't confuse with evaporation. Evaporation is going from liquid to gas, but vaporization can refer to either of these movements. You also have two more unusual ones involving moving from a solid to a gas, which is referred to as sublimation, or going straight from the gas phase into the solid phase, which is known as deposition. Sublimation from solid to gas directly, gas to solid directly is referred to as deposition. As we go through these various charts, we'll explain where you know that sublimation and deposition can occur and where it can't. And so next we'll cover a series of different ways that you can examine phases and phase differences. And each of these can help elucidate some of the components of the major phase changes that you experience when going through physical chemistry.